You know, you fall a prey to what Swami Ramatirtha calls as the snares of 99. Snares of 99 means, I have 99, so I want just one more. And that one more never ends. You talk to anybody, they'll say, there's just one thing that I want. There was a young man, handsome, rich, well-placed. Everything was okay with him. The only thing is, he was not married. And why was he not married? He looked at all married people like us hmm, and saw how unhappy we were. He said, no, no, Baba, I don't want. <laughs> and that two girls of today, very aggressive. I don't want. And then his mother would keep saying, she was a widow. She'd say, Bita, please get married, please get married. So he decided, he said, an idea struck him. He said, you know, if I select a girl, she may be good, she may not be good. But if God selects a wife for me, 100% she'll be a good girl. So off he goes to heaven in search of God. Now don't ask me where it is. I'm also in search of it. And God looks at him and says, Oh, finally you thought of me, young man. And he says um, very sheepishly, Yes, uh, God, no, I think of you often, but I, uh, this is the first time I've come. So what can I do for you? No, God is a giver. So he says, uh, you know, I have everything. You have blessed me with so many things. All I need is just a wife. So God says, you've come all the way from earth and gone through so much trouble just for this one thing. Are you sure you don't want anything else? He says, yes, God, only wife I need. And then God tells him, you sit down, think very carefully and come back and tell me. I will give you anything you want. So he sits and genuinely thinks he can't think of anything else. You see what happens is when you are caught up in the desire, you you're focused only there, you can't think of anything else. So he goes back and says, no, well, the wife is everything I want. Tathastu says God. He comes back and he meets a young lady. And he knows that, ah, this is God's selection because she was really a wonderful person. And he gets married to her. And everything is hunky-dory with them. They, are, they have a lovely time, no fighting, no mother-in-law, daughter-in-law problems, nothing. Everything is smooth sailing. One year passes, three years pass, five years pass. What's the problem? No child. Those days there was no IVF. So off he goes. You know, the wife tells him. Very simple, go to God and ask. Anyway, he asked you, what else do you want? So he says, you know, I feel bad going because God asked me what else do you want and like a fool I said, only wife. So the wife said, but God is forgiving. He's understanding. So go ask. Off he goes. God says, so quickly you've come back. Now what is it I can do for you? So again very sheepishly he says, God you've given me everything. And the wife you gave me is superb. But we don't have a child. So God says, Are you only this you came for? You could have sent me an email. <laughs> anyway, Tathastu says God and he comes back. By the time he comes back, the wife declares, Hey, we're going to be parents. And there is rejoicing and there is celebration. And the child is born a boy that too. Mm -hmm. Beautiful looking, everything is fine. After a few months, the wife calls him in desperation, panic stricken. That the child can't hear. And the wife immediately says, go to God and ask him. This time the husband puts his foot down and says, I will not go to God. Why? I'm not ashamed to go to God. I'm not ashamed to go and say, yes, I, I want one more thing. Then go. He says, no, I'm not going. Because I finally realized I don't know what I want. Hmm? And that's the case with all of us. We just don't know what we want. We are like children asking for this, that and the other. This is not what you want. Even if you get it, 
you will still be as dissatisfied, discontent as you were before you got on this. Therefore, you must sit down and seriously think, what is it that I want? The pangs of making this money or the making a million are the same as when you started. The same trouble, the same heartbreak, the same agitation. Are you going to live like this all your life? Life after life, punarapi jananam, punarapi manam. Or are you going to call the bluff of your own mind and stand apart and say, I refuse like this young man? That is the question. See, it is impossible to talk to a person of giving when he is obsessed with taking. Hmm? Because he'll say, what will I give? I have nothing to give. I am in debt, hopelessly bankrupt. What am I going to give? When a person's life is based on taking, on acquisition, on grabbing, he can't think of giving. That is the problem. The wise understand the limitation of this pursuit. The wise understand there is no hope of getting happiness this way. And they stand apart. You know, the moment you stand apart, you will be happy. That's all you have to do. Just say, I will not succumb to this desire. 